Hi everyone, welcome back to Farinya Talks Milan. I can't say I'm particularly pleased with the result today, but Milan is still in a comfortable position heading into the second leg at San Siro. But that aside, let's jump straight into it. Here are six things we learned from the 2-2 draw between Red Star and Milan. Number one, the officiating was abysmal. I don't know what the refs were doing, but it was a horror show. I do think there were a few questionable calls, not just against Milan, but also in Milan's favor. It was frustrating in the end to concede the way we did. I do think the Theo Hernandez goal should have stood. There was no other place he could put his hand. Of, of course, if your hand is away from your body, then you can argue the case that it's in an unnatural position. But in this case, the ball, for one, hit him from point-blank range, and his hand was close to his body. I don't think he altered the motion of the ball. I think it would have hit his body in any case, and the goal should have stood. The penalty decision Theo Hernandez won, it was a foul. There was adequate contact to go down. But if you look at the Porto and Juventus game, the incident with Cristiano Ronaldo right at the end, you've seen these given and you've seen them not given. And I think there was enough contact, but then you have to be consistent. And that's the biggest issue with officiating. The consistency isn't there. Sometimes they're given, sometimes they aren't. I do think the second yellow on Rodic was a bit unfortunate. It didn't look like he intentionally impeded Kalulu, but the contact was there and the, the referee deemed it fit to give a second yellow card and Red Star going down to 10 men. It killed the tie, but that didn't stop them, obviously, from scoring in the last minute of play. And speaking of which, Samu Castillejo was fouled. If we're being honest about it, it was it's unfair to blame him in that scenario. I think that any quality referee would be giving that as a foul straight away. He cleared the ball and immediately got clattered by the Red Star player. 99% of the time, those are given. And the resulting play wouldn't have happened. And speaking of which, there was another issue in the build-up to the corner from which Red Star capitalized. The player who was offside had interfered with play. He clearly moved towards the ball and impeded or obstructed the Milan defenders from preventing the corner. I don't know why that wasn't given. It's another common incident that occurs in football games. And it was just poor refereeing overall. It's, it's frustrating to have conceded in that way. It feels like injustice. It's reminiscent of the foul on, Lauta uh, foul on Lautaro Martinez from which Milan conceded the Christian Eriksen free kick. Number two, Alessio Romagnoli needs to step up. Alessio Romagnoli, on his best day, is one of the best defenders in Serie A. I think he's, he is one of the best defenders in Europe. And the technical aspects of his game, aside from his pace, obviously, are never in question. Now, it, it's unfortunate that he suffered a big injury. And it does seem like he hasn't gotten into his pre-injury form yet. And he also seems like a magnet for errors. You can sweep it under the rug if it's one of your junior players who make an error. But for a captain, the standards are different. It's becoming habitual for Romagnoli to make these sort of errors. From a leader, you expect calm, you expect composure, you expect a level-headed, mature player. And Romagnoli seems to... to always be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's worrying. That's worrying because if you look at how Milan defended today, Kalulu Tomori and Theo Hernandez were all very good. And the worst of the lot was Romagnoli. Now, he's your captain. And as the captain, he is someone who the team looks to for direction. If the captain has let them down on so many occasions, he loses respect. I think Domori's form, depending on whether Kea can get back to where he is, might push him out of the starting 11. 
I don't know if it will, since he is the captain, since he is um, an Italian national. He's been the captain for the past two seasons now. And it remains to be seen whether or not he renews a contract or whether or not he'll actually be sold. I think he's a very good player. I think he has leadership qualities. He needs to work on it. I think he needs to be more level-headed. He keeps picking up um, stupid yellow cards. He gives away some stupid fouls, but he's also capable of being a very good player. Number three, Kalulu and Tomori look at home on the right. With the absence of Kia, Tomori has stepped in and performed really well. Ever since making his debut against Inter, I think he's grown in leaps and bounds. Initially, I had my worries about his positioning, but today I think he was one of the best players on the field, along with Kalulu, especially going forward, was a lot more dynamic than Diogo Dallo. I think he has the capacity to be a lot more dynamic than Davide Calabria. He's obviously quicker than Calabria. Tomori is quicker than Kia. It works for Milan. It works for the type of football they play. Whilst Kia and Calabria are obviously your starting defensive player as right back and centre back, I don't think Kalulu and Tomori are that far behind. Of course, Kalulu is also versatile. He can play as a centre back and he has done so and done so well. Um, and Tomori, if he is redeemed at the rate he's going, as much as I previously called him an average player, and I think at that stage he was. He's really putting his hand up for a starting spot. And Kalulu, whilst I don't think he'll start, he's an excellent depth option. Their performances make it difficult to leave them both out of the squad. Number four, Krunic's best game in a Milan jersey. If any of you follow me on Twitter, you know how I feel about Krunic, as does most of the fan base. A lot of us agree that he is not Milan quality and he barely cuts it as a depth player. But today he was fantastic. He really finally took his chance. He finally showed what he's capable of doing on the ball. He has scored a few goals for Milan. And I think he scored a header in the Europa League playoff rounds. I, I can't remember. I think it was against Shamrock Rovers. But today he looked comfortable. He was solid on the ball. He created chances. Um, he played Rebic through on goal, and Rebic should have taken the chance, effectively robbed him of an assist. Yeah, I do think it's his best performance I have seen over the last season and a half. Um, again, it remains to be seen whether or not he will stay with the club going forward. I do think if Milan get into the Champions League, they might look to bring in another central midfielder. In, in the same breath, I don't think Krunic and Meite are going to be part of the setup long term. But I will give credit to him for the way he performed today. I do think he was a candidate for man of the match. Number five, Pioli needs to stop rushing players back. Of course, anyone who watched the game last week could see that Benasse was behind the pace. He didn't look comfortable. He didn't look sharp. He was still a bit tentative. He wasn't charging into tackles. He wasn't running as freely. And today we saw a bit of the same. He misplaced a few passes. He wasn't as mobile. Unfortunately, he picked up an injury. I don't know the extent of the injury. I think he may have aggravated his thigh or flexor. Pioli has done this before. I think with Simon Kier, he played him in the Sparta game. And it wasn't, it wasn't a game of any consequence. And he got injured. Now, the decision-making... Is, is frustrating. I mean, us spectators would love for Ben Asser to come back and be the player he was, but it's not going to happen overnight. These things take time. There was a noticeable difference when Sandro Tonali came on. He looked fluent, he was sharp, and he did everything Ben Asser didn't do. Number six, complacency and nothing else. I'm tired. I'm tired of bringing this up. It's, it's just so blatantly obvious that just they, they don't put opposition to the sword. They went 2-1 up, foot off the gas. Red Star had a man sent off, and with the numerical advantage, they dropped tempo. They essentially stopped playing. There was just no urgency and no drive to go and get a third goal. There was nothing. Mind you, this is a team 
that have been undefeated in domestic football. And you cannot, cannot approach a game like this, for lack of a better phrase, it put them in the ass. I, I think they, they created their own misery. I don't think they were overwhelmed by Red Star in any way. They were comfortable. But what you are doing is you are creating unnecessary pressure coming into the second leg. It's psychologically already difficult for an away team coming to your home grounds, having to score three or four goals. And Milan left the door open. Yes, the referee may have messed things up, but you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Now for the player ratings. Donnarumma gets a seven. He made a few good saves in the first half. As commanding as always, Again, I don't think he could have done anything about the goals they conceded. He came close to stopping the penalty. Romagnoli gets a 6.5. I think by far he was the weakest link of Milan's backline against Red Star. Made worse by the fact that he gave away a penalty. Again, it's a mistake. Mistakes happen, but these mistakes are piling up. And I think he's feeling the pressure. Fikayo Tomori gets a 7.5. He's he's just grown ever since he made his debut. He's just exceptional. Theo gets an 8. He was unlucky to have his goal disallowed, but he struck his penalty well to give Milan the 2-1 lead. Pia Kalulu gets a 7. He deputized well for Calabria. I think particularly going forward, he can become a real asset. Meite gets a 6. A quick note. He did go to sleep on the corner from which Red Star scored the equalizing goal in the last minute. Other than that, he was okay. Ben gets a six. He shouldn't have started. He wasn't ready. And I hope that his injury is not serious. Krunic gets a seven. He's my pick of the forwards. I think he was the most likely to do something, to spark something. Rebic couldn't finish the chance he created. I do think that would have changed the complexion of the game completely. Rebic gets a 6.5. Today his finishing was poor, but he did everything else correctly. Castillejo gets a 6.5. He did force an own goal in the first half, but he also made an error resulting in a goal. Mandzukic gets a 6. I can't really recall him having a clear shot at goal. Um, in the second half, he did get a yellow card, so I mean, that's something. Sandro Tonali gets a seven. He came on and immediately showed everyone what Milan were missing whilst Benacer was on the field, but that's expected. Tonali should be playing whilst Benacer is unfit. Him and Kessi should be the midfield pair going forward. Rafael Leao gets a six. This is the second game in a row where he's been disappointing and just been missing. Hakan came on for Mandzukic and he gets a six. He did nothing really notable. He did set Meite up for a header, but that was it. Diogo Dallo gets a six, but again, nothing special. Now for the coach. I don't know to what extent you can place the blame of today's defeat on Pioli. I was skeptical initially about him starting Krunic over Hakan Shalanoglu. I do think Hakan should have had more minutes today. It remains to be seen how he his form is going into the derby. The obvious issue here is the Ben Asset injury that is 100% on Pioli. It seems ingrained to not put opposition to the sword. It's frustrating. It's partly the players to blame. It's partly the coach to blame. Milan have two away goals heading into the second leg at San Siro. The big thing now is how does he approach the derby? For tonight's performance, he gets a six. He needs to turn it around. January and up until now has been tumultuous. Milan haven't been on the best form. This is the last sort of thing Milan would have wanted. Now, the expectations have obviously shifted for Milan. It does seem like it's getting to the players. And good managers, Mourinho, Guardiola, they are able to nip that in the bud. If it's an issue of complacency, as I brought up earlier, as I brought up last week, they are able to fix that very quickly. 
Milan are still in a very good position for the title race. But the players should feel confident that they are still second after, what, 20, 22, 23 match days. It's easier to perform when the pressure is off. And now that the pressure is on, he only really needs to get the group going, particularly if they still want to fight for the title. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And lastly, Forza Milan. It is so frustrating.